1-800-789-789 Stambik Investment Management Services, your investment specialist. From markets and currencies to people and politics, everything today affects investment outcomes. If you cannot make the connection, you cannot make the money. Stambik Investment Management Services. Stambik Bank. It can be. We are one of Africa's and Ghana's largest fund managers. Stambik Investment Management Services provides world-class money management services to individuals, institutional pensions and group funds. Sign up today for the Stambik Cash Trust or the Stambik Income Fund and experience diversified and flexible investment solutions. Managed by your investment specialists. Stambik Investment Management Services is licensed by the Securities and Exchange Commission and registered with the National Pensions Regulatory Authority. Stambik Investment Management Services. Stambik Bank. It can be. I found a new job and it's doing very well. And all I'm doing is saving to build a house. You don't save to build a house. You invest to build a house. That is why I want to take you to my financial advisors. They are thorough. From markets and currencies to people and politics, everything today affects investment outcomes. If you cannot make the connection, you cannot make the money. We are one of Africa's and Ghana's largest fund managers. Stambik Investment Management Services provides world-class money management. Welcoming you to the 10th annual general meeting of the Stambik Income Fund Trust, which I now declare open. I now call upon the secretary to read the notice of the meeting. Notice of virtual annual general meeting of Stambik Income Fund Trust. Notice is hereby given that the 10th annual general meeting of the unit holders of Stambik Income Fund Trust, the fund, will be held virtually on Friday, July 2nd, 2021 at 10 a.m and shall be streamed live to all unit holders from Stambik Heights, Plot 215, South Liberation Link, Airport City, Accra, for the transaction of the following business. One, to receive the report of the manager of the fund for the year ended December 31, 2020. Two, to consider the trustees' report and the report of auditors for the year ended December 31, 2020. Three, to receive and adopt the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31, 2020, and four, to authorize the manager to fix the remuneration of the auditors. Dated June 9, 2021, by order of the manager, Stambik Investment Management Services Limited, on behalf of the trustee, Universal Merchant Bank Ghana Limited. First item on the agenda, is to receive the report of the manager of the fund for the year, ended December 31, 2020. I call upon Mr. George David Alote to re read the report of the manager to unit holders. Madam Chair, thank you. Dear fellow unit holders and partners, I am pleased to welcome you all to the 2020 annual general meeting of the Stambic Income Fund Trust, CIF. SIFS ended the year with returns of 18.1 compared to last year's return of 17.4. Like the Great Depression in 1930s, 2020 will go down in history for the way it stressed the global healthcare system and the economy. The overarching impact of the pandemic led to the IMF adopting an uncertain outlook for global growth. Global growth for 2020 was slashed from an initial 3.3% contraction to 4.4%. However, strong recovery, especially from China and US in the third and fourth quarters, subdued this impact. In Ghana, monetary and physical stimulus mitigated the impact of the virus on the economy. By the end of September, economic activities were above pre-pandemic levels, driven especially by manufacturing, construction activities, and credit to the private sector. A stronger than expected recovery consequently saw an improvement in growth projections from near stagnation to a 0.4% expansion in 2020. A better than anticipated performance by advanced economies in the third and fourth quarters of the year and a robust growth in China saw the IMF revise the previously pessimistic growth projection in its October outlook. 
Oil prices equally made a gradual recovery, although below pre-pandemic levels. Further improvement was expected on the back of the development, approval, and emergency rollout of COVID vaccines in the last quarter of 2020. This informed a modest year-end forecast of 3.5 to 3.7 percent contraction on the global of the global economy. On the fiscal front, the Ghana government deployed several unprecedented measures to curb the impact of household and businesses. This included a 2 billion Ghana City guaranteed SME fund, a 1.3 billion Ghana Cities COVID emergency fund, and a 3 billion Ghana Cities credit stimulus for critical sectors. According to the Ministry of Finance, these measures cost about 10 billion Ghana Cities. The Central Bank equally deployed an array of tools to stimulate economic growth, including an interest rate cut, waivers, and reduction in key banking indices. Nevertheless, the performance of economic indicators varied with the currency broadly, st with the currency broadly stable against, major, against the majors, while inflationary pressures continues to surge. July recorded inflation of 11.3%, the highest since rebasing in 2019. Overall, price levels subdued to 10.4%, marginally missing Bank of Ghana's medium-term target of 8% plus or minus 2. Fiscal deficit levels deteriorated to 9% as of September, and debt position increased to an alarming 71%. The currency, however, remained robust, recording a single digit depreciation of 4%. The local bonds continued its declining streak from 2019, however, as exacerbated by an array of novel factors. The effects of COVID-19 did, did not only sally market sentiments, but also deteriorated the fundamentals of most stocks. These occupied with the usual recurring election sentiments on the financial market and are directed by the central banks to halt dividend payments for 2020 and 2021 provided a perfect storm for the sluggish performance. Overall, market performance was minus 14% compared to minus 12.5% recorded at the same time in 2019. Unlike most banking stocks that were resilient to manage the impact of COVID, the consumer stocks saw key line items deteriorate. Government issuances during the year were heavily skewed towards medium-term instruments with a few retaps on the long end of the market. Secondary market activity saw yields inching up in March and April as foreign investors sold off at discounts in reaction to the pandemic. The peculiar fiscal dynamics in 2020 allowed central bank financing beyond the stipulated threshold. Consequently, the market saw the central bank intervention, especially for medium to long-term government issuances, keeping rates at relatively modest levels. Short-term interest rates receded marginally compared to the previous year. On the portfolio asset mix, assets, SIFS asset grew by 56% to 366 million in 2020. Investment in medium-term government securities, cash and near cash were increased. Bonds made up 67% of the fund's assets, with 27% invested in money market instruments and 6% in cash and near cash securities as at the end of 2020. On returns, full year return for 2020 was 18.1% ahead of its benchmark of 17.4 by 70 basis points. Sales full year distributable earnings grew by 74% to 50.5 million Ghana cities. The fund's performance is attributed, attributed to comparatively higher rates in corporate bonds and tactical allocations in medium term tenants. Madam Chair, on outlook and strategy, global economic growth is projected to be driven mostly by emerging frontier markets in 2021. In Ghana, the Ministry of Finance projects a growth of 5% for the year. We believe the recovery of economic activities to pre-pandemic levels and improving external environment provide the right signals to support such growth guidance. Additionally, the alleviation of electoral uncertainty should further boost confidence in the real and the financial economy. 
the increased momentum in economic activities and improvement in commodity prices, she will see a relatively better fiscal position in 2021. However, the Ministry of Finance projects a cautious target of 8.3, with expectations to return to the fiscal responsibility threshold of 5% before the year 2024. The currency should remain stable at least in the first half of the year as the country looks forward to the annual issuances of international debt, and of which, as at last week, the announcement is still less than 1% um, as at the end of June. We believe the central bank will continue intervening and providing necessary liquidity in the forest market, a strategy predominantly used in 2020. Furthermore, expectations of capital flight to emerging fund frontiers markets, including Ghana, due to declining real yields in developed market, should broadly provide some support for the currency. The headwinds to the city performance may be the size of the import bill as the country's major trading partners open their borders for business. A stable currency and a boost in food production, which is a major determinant of price levels, should see inflationary pressure subdued in most parts of the year, bearing any surprises, especially in the vegetable basket. We are optimistic that inflation will be within the Bank of Ghana threshold of 8% plus or minus 2, at least in the first half of the year, which we've witnessed about 7% or so. The stock market momentum that began in the last quarter of 2020 is expected to continue into 2021. Positive market sentiments post-elections and the gradual global recovery from the pandemic are expected to drive the market. Relatively stronger fundamentals of listed equity should see multiples of the market inch up in 2021. We expect the central bank to give the green light to blue chip banks who decide to pay dividends from 2020 performance. We believe modest government borrowing activities should keep interest rates flat at least in the first quarter for, for this year. Based on this development, Madam Chair, our strategy in 2021 is to closely monitor the yield, to closely monitor the interest rate curve to sustain the fund Retains. Manager, thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is to consider the trustees' report. I now call upon Mr. Ekofor to read the trustees' report for the year ended December 31, 2020. Thank you, Madam Chair. I am Ekofor, representing Universal Merchant Bank and I am pleased to present our trustee report on the Stambic Income Fund Trust. In our opinion, according to the information made available to us and the explanations provided, we confirm that in all material respects, the manager has managed the scheme during the period covered by these financial statements in accordance with the trust deed dated 18 July 2016 and all regulations for the time being in force under the Securities Industry Act 2016, Act 929, and the Unit Trust and Mutual Fund Regulations 2001, LI 1695. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Four. I will now ask the auditor, Baker, Tilly, Under, and Under, to read their report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I read my report. The report is very lengthy, so in order not to make you feel bored, I would like to seek your permission to read relevant portions of the report. Am I permitted? Okay. Report of the independent auditor to the unit holders of Stambic Income Fund Trust. I start with the opinion. We've audited the financial statements of Stambic Income Fund Trust, which comprise the statement of assets and liabilities as of December 31, 2020, income and distribution account, portfolio statement, and capital account for the year then ended, and notes to the financial statements, which include a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory notes as set out on pages 
16 to 26. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the fund as at December 31, 2020, and its financial performance and cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards and in the, matter, in the manner required by the Securities Industries Act, 2016 Act 929, the Unit Trust and Mutual Funds Regulations, 2001 LI 1695, and the Trust Deed, dated 18th July 2016, as amended. Basis for opinion. We conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on auditing the ISIS. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement section of our report. We are independent of the fund in accordance with the International Code of Ethics for professional accountants, including international independent standards as the code issued by the International Ethics Standard Board for Accountants, IESBA, and we fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the code. We believe that the audit evidence we've obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Key audit matters. Key audit matters are those matters that, in our professional judgment, were of most significance in our audits of the financial statement of the current period. They are matters to be addressed in the context of our audit of the financial statement as a whole and informing our opinion thereon. And we do not provide a separate opinion on those matters. There were no material key audit matters to report. Other matters. The financial statements of the trust for the year ended 31st December 2019 were audited by another auditor, that's KWGH, Chartered Accountant, who expressed an unmodified opinion on those financial statements in their reports dated 30th April 2020. I'll skip the other information, skip the responsibilities of the manager, skip the responsibilities of the auditors, then go to the key then one of the key items. That's the report on other legal and regulatory requirements. Compliance with the requirements of part nine of Schedule Eight of the Unit Trust and Mutual Funds Regulations 2001 LI 1695, we confirm that we've obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purposes of the audit. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept by the fund so far as appears from the examination of those books. The fund's financial statements are in agreement with the books of account. In our opinion, the fund generally complied with the relevant provisions of the Security Industry Act 2016, Act 929. The engagement partner on the audit resulting in this independent auditor's report is Samuel Abiel, of my number there, signed on the 30th of April, 2021. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Abiel. I now call on Mr. Ni Ashifi Nunu to present the highlights of the audited financial statement for the year ended December 31, 2020. Thank you, Madam Chair. I present the highlights of the annual financial, st annual financial statements for Stambic Income Fund Trust for the year ended 2020. The net investment income increased significantly by 71.
align the strategy, investment strategy with the projected outlook of the fund. On capital investments, the fund's units increased by 28.5% in 2020 and reported 20.6%. The value of units issued increased by 53.5% in 2020, and 2019 reporting 42.7%. The fund prices also increased significantly by 18.2% year on year. In 2020, we reported 6.56, in 2019 was 5.55, and 2018 was 4.73. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Nunu. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the fund manager's report for adoption. I now call on Ms. Amma Bifa to take us through the comment and voting process on the motions put forward. These are the steps to enable us comment or ask questions. Now, firstly, to second a motion or send a comment or question, you kindly locate the chat box at the bottom at the right or bottom side of your screen. Type and submit your comments and questions. To cast a vote, we have provided two options to enable you take part in the voting exercise in real time. To vote via the online platform, you kindly locate the vote box at the bottom of your broadcast screen and follow these steps. Firstly, you enter the unique token number used to join the meeting. Secondly, you click the cast your votes button. Once you have cast, you've done this, you click the button, you see a list of resolutions to be voted for. You follow the process by clicking the plus sign and then selecting your voting option. Alternatively, you may vote by a short code. To do this, you dial star 899 star 3 hash on your phone. You enter the unique code used in joining the meeting. And then once you've done this, you can also select your vote option and send. Please note that you cannot vote once the chairperson closes the votes. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Briefer. I hereby move that the fund manager's report for the year ended December 31, 2020, and submitted to the meeting be and is hereby received and adopted. Would someone please second this motion? To second, Kindly go to the chat box, type your full name, and then type seconded. Motion has been seconded by Mrs. Doreen Eliasu. Thank you. Motion seconded. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Madam Chair. Okay. Um, I now open the online platform for voting on the motion to adopt the fund manager's report for the year ended 2020. Voting starts now.
30 seconds for voting to end. Voting is closed. Thank you. So, in respect of the voting, we had 49 votes in favor of the motion. There were no votes against the motion, and there was one abstention. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Abrifa. I declare the motion has been duly carried. I hereby move that the trustees report for the year ended 2020 and submitted to the meeting be and is hereby received and adopted. Would someone please second this motion? Motion has been seconded by Mr. Charles Amwakong. Thank you. Motion seconded. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Briefer. I now open the online platform for voting on the motion to adopt the trustees' report for the year ended 2020. Voting starts now.
30 seconds for voting to end. Voting is closed. Thank you. Yeah, in respect of the votes just cast, we had 59 votes in favor of the motion, one vote against the motion, and one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. I declare that the motion has been duly carried. I hereby move that the statements of assets and liabilities accounts as of December 31, 2020, together with the income and distribution accounts and the auditor's report thereon for the year ended on that date and subject to the meeting be and are hereby received and adopted. Would someone please second this motion? Uh, the motion has been seconded by Mr. Eric Godsway. Thank you, Mr. Rifa. Motion seconded. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. I now open the online platform for voting on the motion to adopt the financial statements report for the year ended 2020. Voting starts now.
seconds for voting to end. Voting is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, in respect of the votes, we had 53 votes in favor of the motion, one vote against the motion, and four abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briefer. I declare that the motion has been duly carried. The next item on the agenda is to fix the remuneration of the auditors Baker, Tilly, under and under, in respect of the year ending December 31, 2021. In line with best practice, and as mentioned at last year's AGM, I hereby take this opportunity to move that the manager be and is hereby authorized to fix the remuneration of the auditor for the year ending December 31, 2021. Would someone please second this motion? Madam Chair, the motion has been seconded by Ms. Genevieve Silvi. Thank you. Motion seconded. Are there any questions before the motion is put to the meeting? There are no questions. Thank you. I now open the online platform for voting on the motion to fix the remuneration of the auditors for the year end in 2021. Voting starts now. Thirty seconds for voting to end.
Voting is closed. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, in respect of the votes casted, we had 57 votes in favor of the motion, seven against the motion, and seven abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rifa. I declare that the motion has been duly carried. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Sims, the manager for the Stambeck Income Fund Trust, I would like to thank you for your continued interest in the fund's affair and for attending this meeting. I hereby declare the meeting formally closed. Thank you. Sorry, uh, there was a question, so we'll just quickly go to that. Yes, Madam Chair. So after the voting, there was a question. So if I could just put the question to the manager. So there's a question from um, Ms. Jocelyn um, Asari Kunedu, and the question is, how much is the remuneration? I believe this question is in respect of the auditor's remuneration. Thank you. With regards to the auditor's remuneration, we don't have the current or the 2020 um, audit fees yet, but then it's likely to be the current, as in the 2019, the, 20, the 2020 financial audit, the 2020 financial year audit, audit fees plus inflation. So it's likely to be in the range of maybe 40 to 50,000 Ghana cities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nuno. Are there any more questions, please? No, oh, Madam Chair. Okay. So I'll just go back to closing the meeting then. So on behalf of Sims, the manager for Stambic Income Fund Trust, would like to thank you for your continued interest in the fund's affairs and for attending this meeting. I hereby declare the meeting formally closed. Thank you. I found a new job and it's doing very well. And all I'm doing is saving to build a house. You don't save to build a house. You invest to build a house. That is why I want to take you to my financial advisors. They are thorough. From markets and currencies to people and politics, everything today affects investment outcomes. If you cannot make the connection, you cannot make the money. We are one of Africa's and Ghana's largest fund managers. Stambic Investment Management Services provides world-class money management services to individuals, institutional pensions, and group funds. Sign up today for the Stambic Cash Trust or the Stambic Income Fund and experience diversified and flexible investment solutions. Managed by your investment specialists. Stambic Investment Management Services is licensed by the Securities and Exchange Commission and registered with the National Pensions Regulatory.